Westminster Cathedral in London is the mother church of the Catholic Church in England and Wales. The site on which the cathedral stands in the city of Westminster was purchased by the Archdiocese of Westminster in 1885. Westminster Cathedral is the largest Catholic church in England and Wales and the seat of the Archbishop of Westminster. John Betjeman called it a masterpiece in striped brick and stone in an intricate pattern of bonding, the domes being all brick in order to prove that the good craftsman has no need of steel or concrete. History In the late 19th century, the Catholic Church's hierarchy had only recently been restored in England and Wales, and it was in memory of Cardinal Wiseman that the first substantial sum of money was raised for the new cathedral. The land was acquired in 1884 by Wiseman's successor, Cardinal Manning, having previously been occupied by the second Tot Hill Fields Bridewell Prison. After two false starts in 1867 and 1892, construction started in 1895 under Manning's successor. The third Archbishop Cardinal Vaughan with John Francis Bentley as architect, and built in a style heavily influenced by Byzantine architecture. The cathedral opened in 1903, a year after Bentley's death. One of the first public services in the cathedral was Cardinal Vaughan's Requiem. The Cardinal died on June 19, 1903. For reasons of economy, the decoration of the interior had hardly been started and still much remained to be completed. Under the laws of the Catholic Church at the time, no place of worship could be consecrated unless free from debt and having its fabric completed, so the consecration ceremony did not take place until June 28, 1910. In 1977, as part of her Silver Jubilee celebrations, the cathedral was visited by Queen Elizabeth II. Although there was no religious service it was highly symbolic as the first visit of a reigning monarch of the United Kingdom to a Catholic church in the nation since the Reformation. On May 28, 1982, the first day of his six-day pastoral visit to the United Kingdom, Pope John Paul II celebrated Mass in the cathedral. In 1995, at the invitation of Cardinal Basil Hume, the cathedral was again visited by Elizabeth II but this time for a liturgy the first participation of a reigning monarch of the United Kingdom in a Catholic Church liturgy for several years. On Saturday 18 September 2010, on the third day of his four-day state visit to the United Kingdom, Pope Benedict XVI also celebrated Mass in the cathedral. In January 2011 the cathedral was the venue for the reception and ordination of three former Anglican bishops into the newly formed personal ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham. Architecture the whole building, in the Neo-Byzantine style, covers an area of about 5,017 m2. The dominating factor of the scheme, apart from the Campanile, being a spacious and uninterrupted nave, 18 m, covered with domical vaulting. In planning the nave, a system of supports was adopted not unlike that to be seen in most Gothic cathedrals, where huge, yet narrow, buttresses are projected at intervals, and stiffened by transverse walls, arcading and vaulting. Unlike in a Gothic cathedral, at Westminster they are limited to the interior. The main piers and transverse arches that support the domes divide the nave into three compartments, each 5.56 m2. The domes rest on the arches at a height of 27 m from the floor, the total internal height being 34 m. In selecting the pendentive type of dome, of shallow concavity, for the main roofing, weight and pressure have been reduced to a minimum. The domes and pendentures are formed of concrete, and as extraneous roofs of timber were dispensed with, it was necessary to provide a thin independent outer shell of impervious stone. The concrete flat roofing around the domes is covered with asphalt. The sanctuary is essentially Byzantine in its system of construction. The extensions that open out on all sides make the corona of the dome seem independent of support. The eastern termination of the cathedral suggests the Romanesque, or Lombardic style of northern Italy. The crypt with openings into the sanctuary, thus closely following the Basilica of Sant'Ambrogio, Milan, the open colonnade under the eaves, the timber roof following the curve of the apex, are all familiar features. The huge buttresses resist the pressure of a vault 14.5 m in span. Although the cruciform plan is hardly noticeable inside the building, it is emphasized outside by the boldly projecting transepts. These with their twin gables, slated roofs, 
and square turrets with pyramidal stone cappings suggest a Norman prototype in striking contrast to the rest of the design. The main structural parts of the building are of brick and concrete, the latter material being used for the vaulting and domes of graduated thickness and complicated curve. Following Byzantine tradition, the interior was designed with a view to the application of marble and mosaic. Throughout the exterior, the lavish introduction of white stone bands in connection with the red brick work produces an impression quite foreign to the British eye. The main entrance for Section A owes its composition, in a measure, to accident rather than design. The most prominent feature of the force Section A is the deeply recessed arch over the central entrance, flanked by tribunes, and stairway turrets. The elevation on the north, with a length of nearly 91.5 metres contrasted with the vertical lines of the campanile and the transepts, is most impressive. It rests on a continuous and plain basement of granite, and only above the flat roofing of the chapels does the structure assume a varied outline. On entering the cathedral the visitor who knows St. Mark a Euro unregistered trademark S in Venice, or the churches of Constantinople, will note the absence of a spacious and well-lighted outer narthex, comprising all the main entrances. But this is soon forgotten in view of the fine proportions of the nave, and the marble columns, with capitals of Byzantine type, that support the galleries and other subsidiary parts of the building. The marbles selected for the columns were, in some instances, obtained from formations quarried by the ancient Romans, chiefly in Greece. Equals high altar equals, the central feature of the decoration in the cathedral is the baldacchino over the high altar. This is one of the largest structures of its kind, the total width being 9.5 m, and the height 11.5 m. The upper part of white marble is richly inlaid with colored marbles, lapis lazuli, pearl, and gold. Eight columns of yellow marble, from Verona, support the baldacchino over the high altar, and others, white and pink, from Norway support the organ galleries. Behind the baldacchino the crypt emerges above the floor of the sanctuary, and the podium thus formed is broken in the middle by the steps that lead up to the retro choir. The curved wall of the crypt is lined with narrow slabs of green caristran marble. Opening out of this crypt is a smaller chamber, directly under the high altar. Here are laid the remains of the first two archbishops of Westminster, Cardinal Wiseman and Cardinal Manning. The altar and relics of St. Edmund of Canterbury occupy a recess on the south side of the chamber. The little chapel of St. Thomas of Canterbury, entered from the north transept, is used as a chantry for Cardinal Vaughan. A large Byzantine-style crucifix, suspended from the sanctuary arch, dominates the nave. Equals chapels equals, the chapel of the Blessed Sacrament, on the north side of the sanctuary, and the Lady Chapel on the south are entered from the transepts. They are 6.7 m wide, lofty, with open arcades, barrel vaulting, and upsidal ends. Over the altar of the Blessed Sacrament Chapel a small baldacchino is suspended from the vault, and the chapel is enclosed with bronze grills and gates through which people may enter. In the Lady Chapel the walls are clad in marble and the altar reredos is a mosaic of the Virgin and Child, surrounded by a white marble frame. The conches of the chapel contain predominantly blue mosaics of the Old Testament prophets Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Unlike the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, that dedicated to the Blessed Mother is completely open. Those chapels which may be entered from the aisles of the nave are also 6.7 m wide, and roofed with simple barrel vaulting. The chapel of Saints Gregory and Augustine, next the baptistry, from which it is separated by an open screen of marble, was the first to have its decoration completed. The marble lining of the piers rises to the springing level of the vaulting and this level has determined the height of the altar reredos, and of the screen opposite. On the side wall, under the windows, the marble dado rises to but little more than half this height. From the cornices the mosaic decoration begins on the walls and vault. This general arrangement applies to all the chapels yet each has its own distinct artistic character. Thus, in sharp contrast to the chapel dedicated to St. Gregory and St. Augustine which contains vibrant mosaics, the Chapel of the Holy Souls employs a more subdued, almost funereal style, decoration with late Victorian on a background of silver. As in all Catholic churches, 
there are the Stations of the Cross to be found along the Outer Isles. The ones at Westminster Cathedral are by the sculptor, Eric Gill, and are considered to be amongst the finest examples of his work. Mosaics When the cathedral's architect John Bentley died, there were no completed mosaics in the cathedral and Bentley left behind precious little in terms of sketches and designs. Consequently, the subject and styles of the mosaics were influenced by donors as well as designers, overseen by a cathedral committee established for this purpose. Indeed, Bentley a Euro unregistered trademark s influence is, in reality, only seen in the chapel dedicated to the Holy Souls. Due to the prevailing absence of any real designs by Bentley, there was no real agreement as to how the mosaics should look, and in one instance, already installed mosaics were removed after the death of the artist, George Bridge. The mosaics installed during the period 1912 Euro 1916 were mostly done by devotees of the arts and crafts movement. Those in the Lady Chapel were installed by the experienced mosaicist Gertrude Martin in 1912 Euro 1913. The work was supervised by Anning Bell and Marshall, who later designed the mosaic of Christ enthroned which is above the entrance to the cathedral. The mosaics paid for by the fourth Marquis of Butte in the chapel dedicated to St. Andrew also belong to work of the arts and craft movement. The five-year period saw a tremendous amount of work done and saw mosaics placed in the Lady Chapel, in the alcoves above the confessionals, in the crypt dedicated to St. Peter as well as on the sanctuary arch. No new mosaics were installed until 1950 when one depicting St. The copyright Rasse of Lisieux was placed in the south transept and another in the chapel of St. George in 1952. From 1960 a Euro 1962 the Blessed Sacrament Chapel was decorated in a traditional, early Christian, style with the mosaics being predominantly pale pink in order to afford a sense of light and space. The designer, Boris Aimp, chose various Eucharistic themes such as the sacrifice of Abel, the hospitality of Abraham and the gathering of the manna in the wilderness as well as the feeding the multitude and the wedding feast at Cana. In his old age, Aimp also acted as advisor and principal sketch artist for the mosaics installed in the chapel of St. Paul. These mosaics depict various moments in the life of Paul. His occupation as a tent maker, his conversion to Christ, the shipwreck on Malta and his eventual execution in Rome. It was not until the visit of Pope John Paul II in 1982 that the next mosaic was installed above the northwest entrance. Rather than a scene, this mosaic is an inscription, Porta Cis Ossium Pacificum Parum Qui Se Ossium Apelavit, Jesus Christum. In 1999 the mosaic of St. Patrick, holding a shamrock and a pastoral staff as well as trampling on a snake was installed the entrance to the chapel in his honor. In 2001 a striking mosaic of St. Alban, strongly influenced by the style of early Byzantine iconography, was installed by the designer, Christopher Hobbes. Due to the very favorable reception of this work, Hobbes was commissioned for further mosaics, the chapel to St. Joseph which contains mosaics of the Holy Family and men working on Westminster Cathedral. Hobbes also did the chapel in honor of St. Thomas Becket illustrating the saint standing in front of the old Canterbury Cathedral on the Chapel Euro unregistered trademark s east wall and the murder of Thomas on the west wall. The vault is decorated with a design of flowers, tendrils and roundels as of 2011, there were plans for further mosaics, for example St. Francis of Assisi and St. Anthony in the narthex. Music, despite its relatively short history, Compared to other English cathedrals, Westminster has a distinguished choral tradition, and the choir is considered a fine one. This musical excellence has its origin in the shared vision of Cardinal Vaughan, the cathedral's founder, and Sir Richard Runciman and Terry, its inaugural master of music. Terry prepared his choristers for a year before their first sung service in public. For the remainder of his tenure he pursued a celebrated revival of great quantities of Latin repertoire from the English Renaissance, most of which had lain unsung ever since the Reformation. Students at the Royal College of Music who would become household names were introduced to their heritage when Charles Villiers Stanford sent them to the cathedral to hear polyphony for a penny. This program also required honing the boy's sight reading ability to a then unprecedented standard. The cathedral's musical traditions have been upheld by successive distinguished masters of music. 
Holders have included George Malcolm, whose troubles innovated a brilliant continental tone, voices like razors to quote one auditor. Colin Morby, Stephen Cleobury, David Hill and James O'Donnell. Since 2000, the post has been occupied by Martin Baker. The choir has commissioned many works from distinguished composers, many of whom are better known for their contribution to Anglican music, such as Benjamin Britten and Ralph Vaughan Williams. However, the choir is particularly renowned for its performance of Gregorian chant and polyphony of the Renaissance. All the boys of the choir are boarders at the nearby Westminster Cathedral Choir School. Unlike most other English cathedrals, Westminster does not have a separate choir. Instead, the choir are hidden from view in the apse behind the high altar. This, with the excellent acoustic of the cathedral building, contributes to its distinctive sound. Located in the West Gallery, the grand organ of four manuals and 81 stops occupies a more commanding position than many British cathedral organs enjoy. Built by Henry Willis III from 1922 to 1932, it remains one of the most successful and admired. One of Louis Vian's best-known organ pieces, Carolyn de Westminster, the final movement from Suite No. 3 of Pierces de Fantasie, was composed for it and dedicated to the builder. The apse organ of 15 stops was built in 1910 by Lewis and Company. Although the grand organ has its own attached console, a console and the apse can play both instruments. On June 19, 2007 the premiere of John Taven is The Beautiful Names, a setting of the 99 names of Allah found in the Quran, was performed in the cathedral by the BBC Symphony Chorus and Orchestra in the presence of HRH the Prince of Wales. Choir the establishment of a fine choral foundation was part of the original vision of the founder of Westminster Cathedral, Cardinal Herbert Vaughan. Vaughan laid great emphasis on the beauty and integrity of the new Cathedrale Euro unregistered trademark S liturgy, and regarded a residential choir school as essential to the realization of his vision. Daily sung masses and offices were immediately established when the cathedral opened in 1903, and have continued without interruption ever since. Today, Westminster Cathedral Choir is the only professional Catholic choir in the world to sing daily Mass and Vespers. Sir Richard Rumsim and Terry, the Cathedrale Euro unregistered trademark S first master of music, proved to be an inspired choice. Terry was both a brilliant choir trainer and a pioneering scholar, one of the first musicologists to revive the great works of the English and other European Renaissance composers. Terry built Westminster Cathedral Choir's reputation on performances of Musica Euro by Bird, Tallis, Taverner, Palestrina and Victoria, among a Thursa Euro that had not been heard since the 16th and 17th centuries, and Mass at the Cathedral was soon attended by inquisitive musicians as well as the faithful. The performance of great Renaissance Masses and Motets in their proper liturgical context remains the cornerstone of the choir's activity. George Malcolm consolidated the musical reputation of Westminster Cathedral Choir during his time as Master of Music a Euro in particular through the now legendary recording of Victoria Euro unregistered trademark S. Tenebrae Responsaries. More recent holders of the post have included Francis Cameron, Colin Morby, Stephen Cleobury, David Hill and James O'Donnell. The choir continues to thrive under the current Master of Music, Martin Baker, who has held the post since 2000. In addition to its performances of Renaissance masterpieces, Westminster Cathedral Choir has given many first performances of music written especially for it by contemporary composers. Terry gave the premieres of music by Vaughan Williams, Gustav Holst, Herbert Howells and Charles Wood. In 1959 Benjamin Britten wrote his Missa Brevise for the Choristers and since 1960 works by Lennox Berkeley, William Mathias, Colin Morby and Francis Grier have been added to the repertoire. Most recently four new masses a Euro by Roxana Panyufnik, James Macmillan, Sir Peter Maxwell Davis and Judith Bingham a Euro have received their first performance in the cathedral. In June 2005 the choristers performed the world premiere of Sir John Taverner's Missa Brevise for Boys' Voices. Westminster Cathedral Choir made its first recording in 1907. Many more have followed in the Westminster Cathedral Choir discography, most recently the acclaimed series on the Hyperion label.
and many awards have been conferred on the choir's recordings. Of these the most prestigious are the 1998 Gramophone Awards for both Best Choral Recording of the Year and Record of the Year, for the performance of Martina Euro Unregistered Trademark S Mass for Double Choir and Pizzatia Euro Unregistered Trademark S Requiem. It is the only cathedral choir to have won in either of these categories. The choir's recordings include two discs of Palestrina on the Hyperion label a Euro the Missa Hodi Christus Natus Estate with motets for Advent and Christmas, and the Missa Dum Comparenta with Pentecost motets and plaint chant. In addition, the choir has recorded Macmillan's Mass and a complete Mass for Easter Sunday on the Herald label. More recent recordings include a disc of Victoria's Marian Music and Vaughan Williams's Mass in G Minor which was recorded in July 2004. When its duties at the cathedral permit, the choir also gives concert performances both at home and abroad. It has appeared at many important festivals, including Alderberg, Cheltenham, Salzburg, Copenhagen, Bremen and Spitalfields. It has appeared in many of the major concert halls of Britain, including the Royal Festival Hall, the Igmore Hall and the Royal Albert Hall. The Cathedral Choir also broadcasts frequently on radio and television. Westminster Cathedral Choir has recently undertaken a number of international tours, including visits to Hungary, Germany and the U.S. The choristers participated in the 2003 and 2006 International Gregorian Chant Festival in Watteau, Belgium and the full choir performed twice at the Oslo International Church Music Festival in March 2006. In April 2005, 2007 and 2008 they performed as part of the Duorgani in Concerto Festival in Milan. In October 2011, they sang the inaugural concert of the Institute for Sacred Music at St. John's in Minnesota. Erymus Magazine, Westminster Cathedral has published a monthly magazine since 1896, before the building work was completed. The latest in a series of titles is Erymus, which first appeared in 1996. Erymus is a professionally produced 32-page color magazine, which contains features and articles by well-known members of the Catholic community, as well as non-Catholic commentators and leading figures within British society. It is the successor of titles such as the Westminster Cathedral Record, selling at 60A copy from January 1896, the Westminster Cathedral Chronicle, a monthly, available from January 1907 at 2DA copy or 3-a year, postpaid, and the Westminster Cathedral Bulletin, first published in 1974. The current editor took the decision to make Harimus a free publication in 2013. The magazine is also available to download via Westminster Cathedral's website. Burials, in order of years of office, Richard Challoner Vicar Apostolic of the London District, Nicholas Wiseman First Archbishop of Westminster upon the re-establishment of the Catholic hierarchy in England and Wales in 1850, Henry Edward Manning Archbishop of Westminster, Herbert Vaughan Archbishop of Westminster, Arthur Hinsley Archbishop of Westminster, Bernard Griffin Archbishop of Westminster, William Godfrey Archbishop of Westminster, John Hienen Archbishop of Westminster, Basil Hume Archbishop of Westminster. Popular Culture, in Monsignor Robert Hugh Benson's apocalyptic science fiction novel Lord of the World, Westminster Cathedral is the only church in London still used for religious purposes. The others have all been confiscated by the state. The Campanile Bell Tower of Westminster Cathedral was featured prominently in the Alfred Hitchcock film Foreign Correspondent, at which the attempted murder of a journalist played by Joel McCrea took place. In Schlackapper's Elizabeth, the Golden Age scenes taking place at Ellis Goriel were shot in Westminster Cathedral. The cathedral has been painted by London Irish artist Brian Whelan. See also, List of Churches and Cathedrals of London. Literature Patrick Rogers. Westminster Cathedral, From Darkness to Light. Burns and Continuum International Publishing Group, London. ISBN 0-86012-358-8, Peter Doyle. Westminster Cathedral, 1895 Euro 1995. Geoffrey Chapman Publishers, London. ISBN 978-0-225-66684-7, John Brown and Timothy Dean. 
Westminster Cathedral. Building of Faith. Booth Claiborne Editions, London. ISBN 1-873968-45-0. References. External links. Official website, Catholic Encyclopedia, Westminster Cathedral. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. Westminster Cathedral. Catholic Encyclopedia. Robert Appleton Company.